I was this close to putting on my Superman hoodie. That is the big Superman emblem right in the middle. You've seen me wear it. Go do it. <laughs> so you're wearing a t-shirt. It's because it's a sweatshop in here. Always. How do you drive without your eyes melting out of your skull? Like I, I like don't want to be, be cold, man. You know, when I was in New York this week, I turned my hotel room up to 77. Why? Because I could. Because my house is off in the refrigerator. <laughs> I hate, I'd rather be warm than have to put on 65 layers. I hate, because it's a Kia. I'm already crunched in here as it is. I don't need more clothes. I don't need that. I want it warm. I, okay, all right. I'm going to take full advantage of the 12 cubic feet that I have in here. <laughs> be real. The reason it's hot is because all the heat from the engine just burrows into the cavity. You're just like, I'll just turn the dial up. That Korean cavity. guy underneath the hood is pedaling very fast. <laughs> this is the world's fastest rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs>
So th- that's really where run- yeah. starting running backs are getting taken is in the second round because well, teams don't necessarily want a fifth round option on a running back because you're going to run into the into the dirt for the next four years. Yeah, the formula has there. been unless you're going to get a player that's supposed to change the whole culture of your team and change the offense. Uh, of, you know, if you're just getting a guy to put in there that's younger and cheaper than what you have now, that's different. That's the right. second, third round guy. Um, but a first round guy is a guy like Saquon Barkley. You could tell me yeah. that every team in the league would want a Saquon Barkley exactly. on this team. You know what I mean? So yeah. Ezekiel Elliott. These guys are players that can change the whole game with one play. Right. Um, but now the formula, as we stated many times, the formula now is you draft him in the second, third, anywhere but the first. Mm-hmm. Four years, you grind him to a nub. Yep. And then you see if we can get him cheap. If you get him cheap, sweet. All right. We got a running back for another three years. He's going to be 29 by that time. Yeah. We're not going to have to pay him big, big time money. And then right. let him go if he doesn't want to accept the contract. So then we'll draft another one. Let's keep this simple, right? Let's start. We'll start with the AFC East. Just look at the running backs that are there, right? Okay. So prior to running backs drafted in the first, second, or third round, McCoy drafted drafted before the third round. You got McCoy, Drake, Michelle, and whoever Ed Bell. Ed Bell. Can, are any starting running backs in the AFC East drafted in the third, drafted in the fourth round or later? No. Okay. Next, AFC North. Mark Ingram, first round pick. Joe Mixon, second round pick. Yep. Nick Chubb. James. Okay. James Conner's the exception. Okay. Right. So, okay, so we've gone through eight teams, one running back drafted, fourth round or later. All right, let's keep moving. AFC West is Royce Freeman, by the way, I think is who you're thinking Okay, about. Royce Freeman. So yeah, Royce Freeman. you have Philip Lindsay. Who's, undra- who's undrafted? Um, Damian Williams will start. Right? I, yeah, I suppose Damian Williams is starting. Okay. But you look at the scenarios of why those guys are starting. Right. Ravion Bell didn't want to be there. James Conner ended up proving himself in that offense to say, hey, we don't need Bell. Yeah. And then the other scenario is Kareem Hunt, get, who was a second rounder, I believe? Yeah. Gets, gets the boot. Gets the boot, and now you have Andy Reid there, which is probably negates any kind of running back that you have. You could draft a running back in any round when you have Andy Reid, I believe. <laughs> probably. Really probably. Uh, and then you got Melvin Gordon. Yep. First rounder. And the, the last AFC West team is the Raiders, who they'll pick their first round player this year. They'll pick no. anybody this year. Well, who did they? They just, they just uh, signed somebody. They just they just brought in a running back. Who was it? Tim Biakabatuka. It was not Tim Biakabatuka. <laughs> Jeez, talk about a reference. Tim Biakabatuka. Isaiah Crowell. So Damian Williams. I honestly don't remember Damian Williams in the draft, but he's been in the league since. Uh, he was undrafted. Miami. He was undrafted. He was undrafted in 2014. Ooh. Zero butter. Yeah, they they either dunk it in butter or they don't even give me any butter. Yeah, look at that. No, no, that didn't have that didn't have a no butter crunch. There's there's the essence of butter on that. You can see it right there. There's the essence of butter. Yeah, and I have the essence of football talent. <laughs> We didn't go to the South. Right, yeah, we didn't go to the South yet. Fournette, Mac, Henry. Mm-hmm. Fournette, Mac, Henry, and um, Lamar Miller. Correction, Crowe, I won on draft. So we got, we got two. Connor, Crowell, and... Uh, Connor, Crowell, Lindsey. That's it. So, so you got one in pretty much every division. Marlon Mack was a fourth round pick. Oh, okay. So, so roughly just, 16 te- Roughly, well, if we had the ballpark, roughly around 16 teams in the AFC, five of them have running backs outside of the third round. Right. Okay. All right. 33 per shot. Less than 33 per shot. Yep. All right, next up, let's do the NFC East. <laughs> All of them are first round. Well, and the Jordan Howard just got added in... Um, he was the second or third. Philly. Well, that's what I mean. I don't remember Jordan Howard going high because that was at the time where Chicago was just finding running backs and starting them. You have Saquon Barkley, Jordan Howard, Ezekiel Elliott, and 
Adrian Peterson. No, Darius Geis. I mean, yeah, Peterson or Geis. It doesn't matter because they were yeah. both taken. Yeah. So that, that doesn't matter. Uh, let's see here. Jordan Howard was a fifth round pick. Wow. So there's one. Okay. So I think we're going to pretty much have one in each division. That's what it's looking like. But yeah. I don't think that makes it a rule because the average still says, right? So this is not a dependable model is what I'm saying. Just because there's one in every division, that doesn't make anything. Could Bella have been on to something? What do you mean? Look at a lot of their look – look at a lot of the – First round, just the first rounders that are running backs. They get taken yeah. solely in the first round. They're running backs, yes, but aren't they precision wide receivers too? That can catch the ball and make some make a big difference out of the backfield. And well, I mean, aside oh, from picking oh, up the oh, wins. Wait, 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 wait. So let, let me get what you're saying here. If I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is these players who are drafted later typically have a more rounded skill set than the players drafted higher. So they're more utility players? So, like, I'll give you an example, right? So we talk about Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay can run and catch the ball. Yeah. Right? Well, there's guys that will fall through the cracks. Is that, that's right. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying right. is the running backs that are taken in the first round fulfill two positions for you. Mm-hmm. Okay? We can line him out wide because he's, he's a mismatch. And he can run routes. And he can catch the ball. And he can pick up a blitz. And he can run the ball in between the tackles. He can do all that stuff. Yeah. He, he's the total package. These guys that are taken in the second, third, the third round and maybe later – some of the guys will fall through the cracks. I mean, freaking, if I have to reference them, Tom Brady. It was freaking, yeah. Whatever. But these guys will fall through the cracks. Maybe there's something missing. Oh, he doesn't pick up a blitz ball. Uh, he, he fights the ball when he catches it. Right. He does, You know what I mean? Like, certain things happen with these running backs, which is why they're not taken in the first, second, and third round. But the running backs that are taken in the first specifically can fulfill two positions for you. Okay, what do we want to do? We want to go twins open on uh, – we want to go twins right, open on the left. We want to motion the running back to go in the slot on the left. Mm-hmm. Instead of just putting a slot receiver in there in the game, Right. we're going to motion him out there because right. they, they think we're going to come out in, eye, in uh, two backs. We come out in one back, and that guy's in the slot, I'm and it's a up, mismatch. I'm picking up where you're coming from now. Because so, I, I missed what your intent was yeah. on that, so, but I'm picking up what you're saying now. Yeah. So Bell wanted to get paid like he was two players because he fulfilled two roles. I mean, Jimmy Graham tried to do the same thing. Jimmy Graham lined up as a wide receiver like 86% of the time. That's why he wanted to get tagged as a receiver. So no, you can't blame him, right? No, I can't. can't but blame him. maybe that's the thought process. How you separate a first-round talent versus versus the uh, versus everyone else. But here's the deal. Are the Bills in that group that need to take one in the first round? Well, I don't think the Bills are in a position to be able to miss. You've got one year right now. Right, where you can take a chance on a later running back because you've already got two guys there that can carry the load for you. Barring injury, the rookie isn't going to be super dependent on, so you can bring in a guy in a lower round and kind of craft his NFL career and see what you have, right? And if you don't think the guy's there, next year everyone will know you need to draft a running back in the first round. So you do have the opportunity to take somebody in a lower round if you feel like you can develop them, which this team is convinced they can develop anybody into anything. But that but, think it works opposite to what you want. People sometimes talk about draft a quarterback, let them sit and learn. Running back's the opposite. You want them to play because you only have such a window of them exactly. on the that's, team. That's why drafting a late-round running back and trying to develop them, that means you're only going to get three years of them as yeah. a starter. Yeah. So it's a funky position to be in because I don't believe it. I don't believe in sitting running backs. I no, don't. No. I don't believe in it. You know, quarterbacks, the game is a little different. Running backs, the game's not very much different. No, no, no. Because they, they have to learn pass protection. But, I mean, out of everything that develops, that's the one thing you're really concerned about is developing pass protection skills. I, I would say this. The running backs that you draft fourth round and later, the Bills already got that guy. They signed up for Miami. Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you provide some depth? Do you know what you're doing? And keep plays with the team. That's fourth round and later running backs. Yeah. Lindsey happened to pan out. Yeah. Some of these guys happen to pan out and, and, and be very successful. First through the third, yo, you're gonna be in the rotation. Mm-hmm. So get your stuff. Or second to third, second to third, I'm sorry, second to third round, you're gonna be in the rotation, learn your stuff, learn your routes, learn your uh, protections, all that stuff. And then the first rounders. 
you're playing. You you are. Uh, you're the guy. We're not bringing in a third down back for you. Right. You are the third down back. You know, if you look at the rest of the teams that we didn't cover, right? So we didn't finish the eight, NFC North, NFC South, or NFC West. You just <laughs> want to talk about Matt Breida. Tevin Coleman's there now too. <laughs> so, um, but oh, as you look up and down, right? Uh, Dalvin Cook, right? Oh, early. John. Yeah. Carry on Johnson early. Um, Aaron Jones was fifth round pick. He was. They like, never take running backs high because you got Rodgers. They, they don't Trey try. Cohen. Yeah, he wasn't high either. He wasn't high either, right? I NFC, still don't know how he's not dead. NFC South. Like five, six, hundred pounds. I know, right? <laughs> NFC South, they're all early picks with Devonta Freeman, Christian McCaffrey, and Calvin Kamara. Peyton Barber's the exception. He was undrafted. But again, opportunity has opened the door he for him. He might not there. make the team. He yeah. might not even make the team. You're absolutely right. Um, and they drafted a running back in the second or third round last year, Ronald Jones. So, that I mean, there's the there's there's that. Uh, David Johnson, Todd Gurley, Tevin Coleman, uh, Chris Carson, I think, is the exception. But the team drafted Rashad Penny last year. So, that's what I mean. Even though there are those outliers, mm-hmm. the teams have backed. They've already made the commitment. Two of those teams have already made the commitment to replace that guy. With a higher pick. With a higher round pick. So I think the point to be made is that it's easy to say if you get a running back anywhere on the board, fourth, fifth, sixth, doesn't matter. You're right, you can, but the demands on that draft position are not to be your starting running back. It's to contribute in yeah. special teams, mm-hmm. perhaps be a third down back, depending on skill set, right? A third and long back, if he's a good receiving back, maybe you want him out there, yeah. right? So there's there's certain circumstances where you can take a guy and have him be successful but there's just as many there's more circumstances where taking a guy early the nfl is still functioning on that model doesn't look like it because there's not as many of them in the first round but there's just as many early picks still running the nfl i think saying that you need a fifth or sixth you know fifth or sixth round pick that's gonna be your starting running back is is just poor poor planning the bills are in position to be able to do it well, they're able to because they kn- he doesn't have to start right away. Right. All right. You got you got Gore and you got McCoy, and then you have Ford. Is Murphy there? Still. Murphy's still there technically. Okay, Murphy's still there technically. You just sign another guy. So I don't know if you're trying to throw people off. Where you signed Perry, where that would have been your fifth round pick at running back. I, I don't know. Um, I, the, the Bills are making. The Bills are spending dependable money. They know what Perry is. Uh-huh. It's, he's a good contributor. He's going to do what they need, which allows them to do whatever they want on draft day. And it's okay. Let's see what you got. But the fact is the Bills don't have to take a back early this no. year. But if they don't take a back early and they take one in the fifth, that doesn't take a high bet. That doesn't take a back off the board for them early in 2020. And the difference is every team in the NFL will know they have to draft a running back early. It takes mm-hmm. all their leverage away. Yeah. It takes unless, all their leverage away. Unless... With the cap space that they have, they can get a running back. But I, I, running backs are like left tackles. I don't want to take one that's been used from another team. Yeah. Even though he'll have experience and all that, I don't want that. So that's what it'll, it'll put them, their back against the wall in that respect.